How's it going guys? So in this problem we're given a string and we're supposed to find the length of the longest substring without a repeating character. Now whenever we're faced with an interview problem we want to start with the brute force solution. So in our case the brute force solution would be to iterate through every single possible substring and see if there's and find the longest substring without a repeating character. So for instance, we would first start with just A, and then we would start with AA, and AAA, and then AAAB, and so on and so forth until you loop through every single possible substring combination. Now this is a very inefficient solution and has a runtime of n to the power of 3. So the better solution would be to use what's called a sliding window. So in a sliding window, you would essentially have a window that's checking a current substring and that window would increase or decrease in size based on if there was a repeating character or not. So first the window would just start with one character A and since we only have one character it's impossible to have a, a repeating um, substring so then we would make that window bigger to be AA and in this case this is a repeating substring so then we'd move the window over and just have it be A again, and then so on. We have A, A, and then we see a repeating character, it would be just A again. And then now we have A, B, and then that's not repeating. So then we can increase the window size and then make that A, B, T. And then we can see that there are no repeating characters there either. And then we can increase the window size again to make it a b c d e, and then so on and so forth until you get through the whole string so how do we implement this sliding window and what data structures do we use and one might say we just need two pointers one pointer to the start of the window and one pointer to the end of the window but what you'll notice is that's not sufficient and you'll see why here they were inspecting the substring a b c e and then at this point, you look at A, B, C, E, and you find that there are no duplicates, and then you would want to expand it. So you want to look at A, B, C, E, and then now you see there's a duplicate, and then you would want to change the start of the window. But in this case, you don't have enough information stored because you don't know where the start of the window is. And we can remedy that by using a hash table. So essentially what the hash table is going to store is it's going to store the index of all the elements in the current window. So then when you were, when you hit a duplicate, you'll know where to adjust the window. So in this case, we hit this duplicate and then we would adjust the window just to be C E B. And this will make sense in a second once I go through the code. So when we first start off, we want to start at index zero. So we're just examining this element A. And then we check to see if A is in the hash table. And in this case, it's not. And we skip this line of code for now. And then we move on to max length. So this variable essentially keeps track of the answer that we want to return. And it starts at zero and if we have a substring that's greater than that, we want to update it. So we update it with i minus start plus one. So the reason why we do i minus start plus one, say our current i is over here and our start window is over here. So we want to find the amount of characters from a to b here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We want to have five be the max length. So we have i, which have the value of 6, minus 2, which is 4, and then plus 1, which is 5, which is what we want. All right, moving on. We get to this line here, and this is where we actually add the element to the hash table. So let's do that real quick. We have a here, and we have the index value here, which is 0. And now we go on to our second loop. And in our second loop, we check to see if a, if this a, second a is in the hash table. 
and in which case it is. So then we have to calculate a new start. So this new start is either going to be the current start or the value stored inside this hash table plus one because we want to get the next element over. And that will be our new start in the event that there's a duplicate. So in this case, it takes the max of the start or the value in the hash table plus one, whichever is greater. And in this case, the start would be this value zero plus one. So then it's just one element over to eliminate duplicates. And then we move on to the max length. So the max length was one before, I forgot to write that down. And it stays one because the length of the sliding window didn't change. And then now we update the value in the hash table with this new index. Index is one now. And then we move on to our next iteration and we have another A. So we essentially do the same thing. We check to see if A is in the hash table. And in this case, it is so then our new start changes and change would just be this window this is our new sliding window and then we change our max length our max length actually doesn't change again and then this would change to index 2 and then we move on to b and we see that b is currently not in the hash table so then we can calculate our new max length just be two now and then we add b to the hash table we have b and then the index is three and then that's our new sliding window <laughs> and then we have c and we check to see if c is in the hash table it's not so then our max length becomes three and then we add it to the hash table four and then this is our new sliding window and then we look at e e is not in the hash table so increment max length put an e at index five and then we are looking at this is our new sliding window now and then we look at B and in this case B is already in this hash table so then we would have to calculate our new start so new start would have to be whatever whatever element is plus one is the element over from the last B that was found so then that would be C E B so I'm just gonna start from over here, but this is the sliding window that you wanna look at. So now that we have that, we calculate max length. And in this case, max length is only three. So then this four value stays there. And then we wanna update the value B. So our new value of B is gonna be at index six. So moving on, we have this C here, and we check to see if C is in the hash table, and then we update our start value. So our start value is either gonna be the index at the last C plus one, or the current start value is seven, whichever is greater. So in this case, it would be seven. So then we would go here, max length, that doesn't change. And then we update the index eight. So for our next, so this is our new sliding window. And then our last element C, we check to see if C is in the sliding window and it is. And then we update this and we have nine. And at this point, exit the loop. And then we return max length, which is four. This method is an O of N runtime as well as space complexity solution. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.